Hello, everybody. I thought I'd share another way of spreading the vegan message. And that's to have other passions in life that you really care about. Do something totally unrelated to veganism and contribute to that community. For me, I like NFL football. I'm always watching videos on YouTube and leaving comments that only have to do with football. Others might be compelled to click on my channel and see if I have any content once they see my name over and over again. And since they already have this subconscious connection with me based on our shared interest, they're more open to accepting the vegan message. Let's hear what other animal rights activists have to say regarding this. I also try to be able to use my voice in these spaces that bring me joy to promote these messages of compassion and care and veganism. Um, so like as a, I worked for a little over a year as a yoga teacher in Colombia, and in every single one of my yoga classes, I, I weave these ideas into it. And yeah, this is kind of wild. Uh, like a little anecdote is like, um, there's a group of activists in the Bay um, and a new activist came to a, a protest and like the leader, of that, the leader of that protest asked him like how he became vegan and how he got involved. Uh, and he's like, oh, well, I was at the, I was traveling through Colombia and I went to this yoga class and my instructor was like talking to us about compassion and about <laughs> veganism. And it really had an impact on me and I decided to go vegan. And the leader of the protest was like, oh, like Nico? And he's like, oh my gosh, oh. yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, so like it has, and that's just like an example of like these one-off conversations. Like we never know the kind of impact we can have, um, but being able to like, Basically, I, I think what's really important for people is to practice self-care, authentically take, I mean, it can be anything. It can be like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can, there's a million examples of things that bring people joy and happiness, but continue to center those in your life, practice those in your life, and then sprinkle in the animal rights stuff in those. And when you connect with people on shared ground, like let's say your passion is bird watching um, and you're out birding and you like with somebody else, you already have this immediate connection with somebody through your shared passion that builds a bridge and then you can talk about animal rights stuff. So I think for me, like I don't see it as a separation of like from eight to five, I'm doing animal rights advocacy. And then from five to six, I'm like doing myself. I just see it as kind of all interwoven. I'm like taking care of myself and um, in those spaces, still doing my best to, to speak out for animals. I love that. And I think that's also very important in that you can incorporate um elements of wellness and animal advocacy within each other and you know one day you can bust out the megaphone and do all of that stuff or then that the other day you can just go to a fun cooking class and talk to people about veganism and animal rights or you go to a dance class and you're still having these conversations um without you know it's like you said it's not um it's not like okay my vegan i turn off my animal rights stance after this certain time right it's part of who we are no Injustice Lasts Forever says, I like Ness Classic Tetris. If I make my presence known in that community and then they click my channel, they might be more open to accepting veganism from someone with a shared interest. That's true. It is true. That it's it's normal. But the thing is, we want, what we want is for, 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 for veganism to be so fucking normal that when someone finds out you're a vegan, they're like, oh yeah, of course you're a vegan. Of course, well, most people are vegan. As vegans, not vegans, nothing. Vegans just like whatever. That's what we want, right? We don't want it to be some big things. Big. It's a big deal right now because, because it's not like that. But if someone finds veganism through a fucking Tetris game gamer, it's going to seem so normal because they're just like, oh, I play Tetris. Do, 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 do I play Tetris? Oh, they play Tetris. Hey, they're a vegan. That's interesting. We're both Tetris players and that one's a vegan. It's so, you've already bridged, like such a nice bridge of the gap between you and them just by having this shared interest. And I'm putting it out there. And is it going to please everyone? No. Is everyone going to agree? No. But the people that do agree come along and they're like, oh, I like this guy. I agree with that. Oh, and he's a vegan. That's interesting. We have shared interests, but I never thought I would share something with a vegan. It, you see, it, it clicks, it clicks. So it makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? It bridges some gaps, right? And the reason I decided to make this video about this under the radar approach to activism is because it's what personally turned me vegan. Without getting too deep into it, I'd been following Cosmic Skeptic on YouTube for a couple years. For those of you who don't know, he's a young guy from England who makes content about philosophy and atheism 
where he breaks down other people's claims exceptionally well. As a fellow atheist myself, I always loved how he'd be able to shine light on a person's logical fallacies or correct someone's incorrect assertions. He's always able to defend his position with such clarity. Human slavery was abolished only in the Judeo-Christian world. Well, fantastic. I'm so glad that slavery was abolished in societies that believed in a religion that was once used to justify the very slave trade being abolished once they began to move past biblical literalism and enter an age of secular enlightenment. It was high time they made up for this moral disgrace. So when he started publishing videos on this new topic of veganism, I initially chose to not watch them. Knowing how logically sound his arguments always were, surely I'd realize the error in how I was living. But I eventually did watch them in November of 2019. And because I knew I could trust him in other matters, I was more willing to hear what he was saying and take in the vegan message. As our, as our last speaker said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And I think we can all agree that this is accurate, but I can offer another corollary to that point, which is that extraordinary harm and mistreatment requires extraordinary justification. And we don't even have measly evidence, not even a, even a shred of it, even for the most basic mistreatment of animals that we currently partake in. Okay, if you pride yourself on rationalism, pride yourself on refusing to leave out any sentient creature from your rational moral code.